Hi, we are Tahir, Arthur, Michael, and Adam, and welcome to our brief introductory video on terahertz antennae. First off, you're all wondering what terahertz even is. Well, don't be scared by its big name. It's just another frequency spectrum that exists from about 300 gigahertz to 10 terahertz. That's 300 billion hertz to 10 trillion hertz. This means any waves in this frequency have a wavelength of about 1 millimeter to as small as 0 0.03 millimeters. Now what's so special about this specific spectrum is that it's still pretty new to us and we haven't figured out what to do with it just yet. One of the reasons why we're so interested in it is it can increase our wireless communication spectrum and fill demands for bandwidth. But before we get into its uses, we should probably look over how a terahertz antenna works. In order to emit terahertz radiation, or radiation anywhere in the terahertz spectrum, a laser beam is shot at a photoconductive material. The laser possesses an energy that exceeds the band gap energy of the photoconductive material, also known as the energy required to release an electron from the valent shell. This causes the generation of electrons and holes on the surface of the photoconductive material, and as a result, photo-induced time-varying currents are formed that radiate terahertz waves. To improve directivity of a terahertz photomixer antenna, large area emitters using an array of photomixers are used. A photomixer used for excitation and detection of the terahertz radiation consists of two laser sources yielding a terahertz difference frequency. They light a photoconductive antenna where a semiconductor material is excited and serves as a terahertz coherent wave emitter. The value of the beat frequency can be easily regulated by changing the temperature of the laser diodes or laser current operation. Now, just like x-rays, the terahertz waves penetrate many materials such as paper, plastics, textiles, and foams. This provides opportunities to see through objects and also see features hidden inside these objects. But unlike x-rays, their lower energy doesn't pose health dangers. This gives terahertz antennas uses in many fields. For example, in the medical field, it can be used for medical imaging, such as for identifying early stage skin and breast cancer. The terahertz photon energy is too low for the ionization of materials, and thus this non-ionization radiation is much less likely to cause cancer and genetic mutations compared to x-rays. In security, terahertz signals can be used to detect all sorts of hazards, such as weapons, even chemical and biological ones. It can also be used for fingerprint detection, and for security inspections of airplane passengers to detect weapons hidden below clothes. Another use would be for non-invasive safety inspections, such as non-destructive industrial quality checks or inspections of space shuttles when flaws. The terahertz spectrum can be used for fast data transmutation due to its much larger bandwidth and thus potential data capacity. Lastly, many fundamental resonances of materials are in the terahertz frequency region, making it useful in the field of spectroscopy. Terahertz frequencies can be used for areas such as the investigation of superconductors, investigation of plasmic effects in conducting materials, and rotational states of molecules. So, just as a quick recap, terahertz waves have a much higher bandwidth, a smaller attenuation than optical or laser signals, are much safer than x-rays, and can provide many non-invasive inspections. However, there are some setbacks to the THZ waves, such as limited range due to the high path loss, and low receiver sensitivity. For communication, terahertz radiation is difficult to transmit through cables, even though it can be easily transmitted through the air. Additionally, the cost of terahertz sources and detectors is still far higher than other equipment. So, because the spectrum still has yet to be used regularly in practice, many industries can still benefit greatly by putting them into use. For example, in British Columbia the pine beetles cause a lot of cracks inside trees that would later be used for lumber. Because these cracks can't be non-invasively inspected for before, Many times manufacturing costs increase because these unexpected cracks show up when the wood is already cut into its specified dimensions. With the use of THZ waves, however, we can easily detect these cracks beforehand, 
and make much better manufacturing decisions that would end up lowering the cost and the wasted wood. Now this would greatly benefit the industry. So, in conclusion, terahertz waves are still a great place for innovation, especially due to its non-invasiveness, safety, and speed. Many applications are still being researched and will be in daily use in the near future, and many industries which have not looked into this medium yet will still be able to benefit as well. That concludes our presentation. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope you got to learn something new.